A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter stood up in the midst of the brothers and sisters. There was a group of about 120 persons in the one place. He said, My brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was the guide for those who arrested Jesus. Judas was numbered among us and was allotted a share in this ministry. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his encampment become desolate, and may no one dwell in it, and may another take his office. Therefore, it is necessary that one of the men who accompanied us the whole time the Lord Jesus came and went among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day on which he was taken up from us, become with us a witness to his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take the place in this apostolic ministry from which Judas turned away to go to his own place. Then they gave lots to them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a passage from that really adventurous book known as the Acts of the Apostles, and I think I've already told you it's one of my favorite books in the New Testament. And we have so many stories of this great adventure of grace, of suffering, and of of hope in the Lord Jesus that the Apostles experience. It's really awesome and it's really hard to to understand the the awesomeness of the power of God working through the Apostles. Now in today's reading I just shared with you, it comes from the feast day of the the, uh, Feast of St. Matthias which was celebrated recently and uh, St. Matthias is the one who as we heard was chosen to replace Judas Iscariot. Now When we first read this passage from the Acts of the Apostles, it looks like it's simply an an historical account of of the appointment of another apostle uh, chosen by God and and really called for by St. Peter and his friends. And when I read this story, though, I saw something else going on here. Uh, I believe there was a lot of really deep emotional stuff going on in the hearts of all of the people who were gathered there. For example, we have the Apostle Peter. Now remember Peter and his friends, they're just like us. Uh, they're poor sinners who are trying their best to do God's will. And sometimes they're really good at it, sometimes they're not so good. But they're real human beings, just like us, with a heart and a mind, with a body, with a soul. And I'm willing to bet that Peter was experiencing a lot of emotional pain in this moment. And here's why. because he had been a friend of Judas Iscariot. And this whole moment of the selection of the Apostle Matthias is going to bring back to him who Judas was and what Judas did to Jesus and his friends. Peter had been hurt very badly by Judas Judas Iscariot. Now remember that Judas was one of the twelve. Judas was part of this new community of the church. He was part of the leadership of this community in this priesthood and the leadership of the church. And Judas was there the whole time, even at the Last Supper. And Judas betrayed Jesus. Now the thing is, when Judas betrayed Jesus, it wasn't just as if he, he was weak. He was malicious. He chose to reject the Lord Jesus and to turn away from him. And Judas did not only hurt Jesus, but he hurt everybody connected to Jesus. You know, when someone hurts you, it doesn't just hurt you. That, that wound is not just yours. It's a wound that impacts either directly or indirectly everyone connected to you. Your family, your co-workers, your friends. It impacts you very deeply and for a long time and everybody associated with you. So when Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus, it also hurt Peter and the others. Now look at what Judas did. He didn't just go to the chief priest and say, hey, give me 30 pieces of silver and I'll hand them over to you. But he was deceiving Jesus and his friends. He was putting on an empty show 
of wanting to be part of the clergy world in order to serve God and his people, and an empty show of friendship. He was pretending to be a friend to Peter and the others. He was fake. He was malicious. And so when Peter is here, ready to appoint a new apostle, he may well have been thinking about all of that pain that Judas Iscariot caused him and the others. Now, when someone hurts you, one of the reactions is you get angry, and that's totally understandable. That's natural. Uh, we become angry when we're the victim of someone else's injustice. Now, what can happen, though, is we can start to dwell on what they've done to us. And every single day we think about what they've done and every time we think about what they've done we get angry. And we get angry and angry and angry and we get to the point where we have a heart full of anger. Our heart is full of anger. And that's not good. The other thing that we can do is in addition to anger is we can start to look at our wounds and realize that our life has been ruined by what someone else did to us, whether it was through their malice or through their weakness. Our life has been wrecked and we can give in to despair. So we can have a heart full of anger and a heart full of despair. And those things, if our heart is full of those things, it's going to impact our lives very powerfully and it's going to impact every area of our life. If you've got a heart full of anger, that's going to spill over into your relationships. It can negatively impact your mental health. It can also negatively hurt your physical health. If you're full of anger, it won't be good. If you're full of despair and you just go through life feeling that your life has been wrecked by someone else, that's going to impact also your relationships, your mental health, and even your physical health. It's not good. So, Peter is someone who experienced tremendous hurt from someone that he loved, Judas Iscariot. He considered him a friend, and he has to deal with the fact, the historical fact, that Judas betrayed him, hurt him so badly. And what does Peter do? Well, this is something in this reading that really jumped out to me, is he had like a certain, not really a process, but there were a number of tools he used to help him not only cope with the wound that he had received from Judas Iscariot, but to really go on with a, sen a sense of freedom and hope. What does he do? He turns to the Scriptures. Notice in the reading from the Acts of the Apostles, he looks back through the Scriptures and tries to see where the Holy Spirit was speaking. And what he's doing is he's finding in the Scriptures some inspiration that can help him understand the hurt that he'd gone to because of what Judas had done. And that's a good thing. He's not just looking at the hurt and the wound, he's looking to the Word of God for some eternal wisdom. He looks to the Holy Spirit and really believes that the Holy Spirit is working even when we're getting hurt by things. Even when we've been wounded and our life has been derailed by others, the Holy Spirit is with us. We are not alone. Peter is experiencing and expressing that he's not alone. The Holy Spirit is with him. And then he turns to the Lord Jesus with his faith in the presence of Jesus. He thinks about the life of Jesus, how Jesus went among them, how he was taken up on the cross and rose from the dead. And then he turns to prayer. They pray to the Lord for some guidance. And they look to the resurrection of Christ. Now, I think that these actions of Peter and his friends can really help us when we're dealing with the wounds that others cause us, or when we're dealing with some traumatic experience in our own life. We look to the Word of God, believing that there is some wisdom there that can touch our present situation, that can lift us up and guide us, can be like a, a light from God shining upon our darkness. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe that God is working, that He's active even now in our lives. We have faith in the Lord Jesus, and we pray with great faith in the resurrection, believing that Jesus in His resurrection conquered all of the trauma and wounds that we have experienced. So, Peter and his friends continued to worship the Lord, continued to worship the Lord Jesus with tremendous faith in their hearts. 
So the alternative to that is to stop worshiping God and to be filled with anger and despair. Now think about this for a moment. Suppose you go down the path of letting yourself be filled with anger and despair. I don't condemn you for feeling angry or feeling hopeless, but if you go down the path of sort of embracing those things, think about this. You're always thinking about the wrong that was done to you. You're always thinking about the wound or the many wounds you have received from others. It's like you're meditating upon them day in and day out. And you know, in the prayer of the rosary, one of the parts of the rosary is we meditate upon the life of Jesus and Mary. We think about his birth and how he came to us. We meditate upon his suffering and death. We meditate upon the gift of his light. We meditate upon his resurrection and glory. Well, if we're going down the path of anger and despair, we're not meditating on the blessings of God in Jesus Christ, in history and in our lives. We're meditating upon the sins of others. It's like we're, we're creating false gods. We're creating false gods out of the sins of others and out of the wounds that we have received. It's like we're thinking about them and trying to pay homage to them. Do you know sometimes, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but you've been hurt by someone and you start to feel that you want to tell everybody what you've been through. You want to tell everybody, you know, this person did that and did this, and I managed to survive it, but this is what I went through. It was horrible. And that's understandable. It's like you're looking for some kind of consolation. But look at what Peter did. He starts talking about the work of God in the Holy Spirit. He starts talking about the work of God in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So he doesn't go around saying, yeah, look at our lives. They're ruined. He's telling the people, we're moving on. Not just moving on, we're moving into the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So, I really believe that what Peter does here can help us. If you're going through some trauma, some hurt, Peter went through that. Was Peter hurt by Judas? Yes. Was he hurt badly? Yes. Was he hurt deeply? Yes. Did that hurt cause tremendous wounds in his life and in the life of his friends? Absolutely. Did he give in to anger and despair? No. He turned to God even more. He turned to the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus, and prayer, and tremendous faith in the resurrection of Christ, the victory of Christ over all evil and sin and wounds. So we've got to do that. We've got to follow this program of the Apostle Peter. You got some hurt, you got some trauma in your life, you need healing, you want hope and joy, turn to God even more. I know someone who was badly hurt by a member of the Catholic clergy uh, when she was a teenager, and she was hurt very badly. And what she's done is she has devoted herself to the Lord Jesus even more. And now, a number of years later, she has this ministry of trying to bring healing in any way she can to those who have suffered the similar trauma that she did. And when someone is hurt by a member of the clergy, by a priest, the hurt is very bad. It impacts someone's a soul. It impacts their relationship to God. But this woman I know, she's been working hard to, to help to lead people to healing because she knows there is healing in Jesus Christ. Well, you know something? The Apostle Peter and his friends, they did the same thing. They were like the role models in how to find healing when you've gone through some trauma and some terrible hurt. The Word of God, the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus, resurrection of Christ, and prayer. So brothers and sisters, you and I are just like Peter and his friends. Will we be hurt in this life? I wish not, but it seems to be the way it goes in this life on earth. We're going to be hurt in one way or another. What do we do? We keep following the Lord Jesus Christ. That's most important. Realize that God is with you. And when you realize that God is with you and that He has a plan for you that's working according to His eternal wisdom, then your heart is not going to be filled with anger and despair, but your heart is going to start to be filled up with the love of God in Jesus Christ. And when you have a heart full of God's love, that love is going to impact everything in your life. 
and it's going to make things so much better. God bless you.